Welcome back. Hey, let's take a look at this uh, tiny chess bots challenge, eh? So, uh, Sebastian Log on YouTube had uh, decided they wanted to throw a tournament after having done some coding experiments of their own. And they were curious, uh, for the participants of this tournament, if they limited their source code to just 1024 tokens, uh, what's the best outcomes that they could produce? And uh, he ran a tournament, and you can find this I ran a chess programming tournament on YouTube. I'll link to it. Um, but more interestingly for us now, I can play against some of these bots courtesy of his wonderful effort collaborate or combining compiling this uh, executable. So, without further ado, let's attempt the chi tiny chess bot challenge. First, let's try the copycat. So, I wonder how the copycat plays. Hmm. Interesting. What if I do this? Okay. What if I do this? Mm hmm. I think we know what's going on here. That a copycat attempts to play the move that was just played, or picks a random move in the event that that's not possible. So. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to fully exploit the spot. Um, yeah. Should we rematch this? Okay. What's the most evil way? Oh, I remember. I remember now. <laughs> Wait, there's a trick to this. Yeah. Let me do this. There you go. That's how you defeat the mirror opponent in four moves. Uh, so you can actually look at the source code of the bot, but we'll leave that as an exercise uh, for the viewer. Let's play against a Bong Cloud Enthusiast. Moves randomly unless can capture, promote, or deliver checkmate. Well, that's fun. Let's play something... Um, just equally fun against uh, the spot. Hey, hey, it took my pawn. Okay. Oh yeah, I see. The bong cloud is just bringing the king up. I thought there was going to be more to that, and that's why I was just faffing around a bit, waiting to see the remainder of the plan. Um. All right. So that. Oh, right. That's a capture. We remember how the pieces move. Maybe. All right, so fine. We'll take one of these, take one of those, one of these. Surround that king. And uh, there we go. Uh, that's pretty cool. Whatever bot. Tries its best to play a good game of chess. Only capable of looking one move ahead, though. It still appreciates the value of developing pieces to safe squares and retreating pieces when under attack. All right. You know, I really should have put a timer on my overlay, because this could be a race category. Defeat all the bots. Um, assuming the challenge is even viable, and I'm concerned that we're going to hit some point where this challenge is going to become too much for me. So I didn't bother with a timer, but in retrospect, you know, maybe since there's the possibility that I might be able to win the challenge, I should perhaps have had a timer just in case. Oh, I missed mate in one. Um, there we go. So then there's Apple Method. It only cares about material and tempo and spends most of its time dreaming about capturing your pieces. Unlike the bots before it, it's capable of looking ahead several moves. Alright, so we gotta actually play some serious chess here. Um, hmm. Dreaming about capturing my pieces. What might that int- okay. Sneaky little bot. You gotta be on high alert against this thing, so says Sebastian. So, uh, wait, we can take this way. All right, yeah, you did get a pawn. 
Nicely done. I'll take one of these. Oh. Man, I was hoping for something epic here. Is this epic? I don't think it is. <laughs> Sneaky. Uh-huh. No, okay. I see what you're up to. Yeah, the bot sees that I'm threatening checkmate, so it defends. But it's not enough. Uh, is this mate? It is. Nice. Nicely done apple method, making me think. This bot likes to advance its pawns, develop its pieces, and get the king to safety. Prefers positions where it has lots of possible moves, and its opponent has few possible moves. Struggles with tactical lines, often thinking that hanging pawns are doomed, instead of fully calculating the outcome. Hmm. Okay. These are starting to get competitive. Although, if I look at the ALO rating, I shouldn't be so concerned just yet. It is... Uh, anthropomorphizing these engines is a fun thing to do. We all like to imagine an intelligent AI. Uh, hence the I in AI. But, um, you know, machines are not sapient. Um, they don't think like you and I think. So, um, yeah, while like these programs are pretty cool and they can do a lot of things, uh, don't overly inflate your expectations. Um, so, for example, here I've managed to exchange into an endgame where, you know, it's not an ob. I have to make sure my mouse doesn't slip here, but... So, it's not obvious to many humans, um, but this endgame should be heavily advantageous to black here. So we're going to kick the rook. Okay, this is really nice. So I can pick up this. Um, oh, well, okay. It's cheeky. Mm -hmm. That prevents me from checking uh, on that square at this instant. Uh, if my king were over here, things would be simpler. Huh. Okay. Well, looks like we're going to deal with perpetual check stuff. and Yeah, this might not be winning after all. That's embarrassing. I should beat a 1200 ALO bot every time. This is embarrassing. Um... Alright. I guess I haven't been taking this seriously. Um... Let's attempt to defend this and produce counterplay over here. Yeah, there's a lot of practical problems in this position. Oh, okay. This bot doesn't know how to play endgames. Thank goodness for the, what was it, 2,000 token limit? Um, yeah, makes it possible for me to win. Right, so you can see a few moves ahead. Three, so this is four moves by Black, seven moves by both players to see that whole combination. Um, yeah, the more experienced you are as a chess player, the more you just know that things are going to play out that way. Um, some patterns are really common in chess. But that was a tough game. Let's try a few games against this opponent, and maybe this time try to play a bit more solidly. Yes, our opponent dreams of capturing our pieces, so says the narrative. So now that I have some sense of what that might mean, 
Um, I'm going to play just a touch more cautiously than I played last time. All right, so we exchange some pieces, castle, and this is loose. Um, yeah, all this calculating ability only helps so much if you don't like observe fundamental principles about protecting your king and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, if you calculate a ton, you can make up for not having followed good principles of solid chess. Uh, but you're combating your own efforts in that way. Um, so, let's see. I can take this, right? Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. I'm hitting this twice. Rook h7. So taking this does not win. But I can't really do anything else this instant either. I could exchange an e7 with material loss, but that's no good. Um, I could bring up the pawn and the knight. Um, sure, our AI opponent could... Mm. Yeah. So I bring up the knight. If I sack my bishop, am I still winning this? The queen runs away, I take, queen takes, rook takes. So this is just a temporary sham sacrifice. Um, might not be worth doing it here, though. If I could back up the bishop, they kick it this way. No, we want to do the sack on that square. Right. So we hit this. Do I want to play bishop e3 now before I go into this? Or do we just take it right now? I think we just take it. Or I could play pawn d6, knight e5 is a problem. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the bot cannot recapture because it's mate in one. Um, so yeah, like I said, sham sacrifice. Um, can attack the queen. If the queen takes the knight, we check and then take the queen next. Um... Keep hitting the queen. Try to get away from our king. Uh, have second thoughts about the whole thing. My attempts to play defense have not helped. There's no take back button. I want to take back my move because I messed up. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So... Like, if I run, retreat my knight, queen takes pawn, threats mate. And I can stop the mate, but it's just... This is spiraling here. This is not good. Knight c6, pawn takes, pawn takes, bakes four threats. Let's do that. Okay. Our opponent does not want to take the knight. Uh, I guess we'll just go back and defend this, then. And now what? Um, have I trapped? No, I've not trapped the queen because it goes to a4. Or a... Well, no, a2 is not available, but a4 is available. Um, yes, yeah, so let's bring this rook forward. And then I was going to bring out the other rook and try to checkmate down the file. Uh, without a queen, um, this is like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, there's a sack. Uh, do I have mate somewhere here? Bishop a7 forces the king away from this square. I could just take here directly and then... No. Uh, yeah, bishop a7 check is the direct path here. But then it plays b6 and bishop a6 in the future. Am I forced to play defense? I want mate. I want a cool checkmate. I don't have a cool checkmate. I have to settle for, like, 
bring the rook to safety to avoid the fork, and then knight takes my pawn. I think. I didn't see a way to force mate there. You probably did. It's okay. Um, and then we, there's our cool checkmate. <laughs> I tried to pre-move queen to a7. Alright, let's try another one. Uh, are we going to get an exchange slav? <laughs> this bot doesn't know the slav defense, or semi-slav. Um, okay. We've, I've developed all my pieces. Uh, except the bishop on c8. So we bring the knight over. Defend stuff. Kick this. Um. Oh, and then we could... If I bring the knight out, and then the other knight forward, I can exchange to pick off this bishop. Is that what I want to do? Just because I can do it? Do I want to do that? Or do I want to just take this knight? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, I guess I do want to pick off this bishop. And we're left with a exciting, exciting endgame. <laughs> um... So now I just push everything. Sadly, this is only defended once. Otherwise, I could like push b4 and a3 and b3 and all that. Well, that doesn't work. It doesn't do anything to keep pushing those pawns. Um, how do I make progress? The bot has defended its pawn on f5. There is an open file against my king. I feel like I should have something here, though. If I push pawn a3, pawn b3 shuts down the attack. If I push pawn b4, knight takes pawn, pawn b3, queen takes rook b8. Let's just do it. This is a game. Okay. I've spooked my opponent. I was trying to justify this pawn sack on b3 after sacking the a-pawn. Uh, I don't know if it would have worked or not. I'm still not out of the woods yet either. Because um, I'm doing this next. Now do I push pawn a3? Is this how we build an initiative against this bot? Um... <laughs> Interesting. Well, I mean, A2 is not a capture, but it seems pretty effective. <laughs> hmm. I think we've caught the bot off guard. Um, just a touch. Alright, and then I can take this for free, because then I can promote this next. Uh huh. Yeah, the threat to promote in the corner is such an extremely powerful idea here. That compels the opponent to walk right into stuff that otherwise it wouldn't do. Uh, and I can back up with check. So it stopped my promotion effort. Um... Man, I can't... There's not some way to continue the threat. I could sack this on c5, pawn takes, rook check. Um, exchange a rook and then promote. That's possible. Yeah, again, taking the bishop would let me promote. And so it's gonna... Our opponent is gonna prevent me from promoting at any cost. Including the cost of the rook. Um, let's just check. Alright, we'll give up the pawn for a bishop. That's fine. Uh, 
This is okay. And mate. All right. So huh, we can analyze the games in Lee Chess if we desire. I'm good. Let's try Monstrosity 200. Estimated ALO of 1569. This bot uses only 200 of the available 1024 tokens, but is surprisingly strong nonetheless. It cares about material and peace mobility and has a decent search algorithm squeezed into its tiny brain, allowing it to calculate far better than the bots before it. Well, let's take a look. We're going to have to be careful <laughs> not to drop anything. Because the one advantage these bots have is the ability to calculate every damn variation. Uh, if I take this pawn... No, stuff's not hanging in my favor. I can move knight h4, knight f5. But we'll just try to keep things simple. Hey, I can take a piece. I can take a piece. Uh, for an exchange? You know, maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. We just keep things simple. We'll take one of these. We'll push that. Uh, if I could push a3, b4 to, like, force the queen away from defense of the square, that'd be nice. Um, but if that were so effective, surely our opponent would have spotted it first, right? Oh. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Uh, crap. I might be losing to this 1500 ALO rated bot, but... It leads me to question, like, what the ratings mean. Um, like, 1,500 on what scale? If it's just against a population of bots, then... Yeah, 1,500 CCRL sounds pretty strong. Um, sounds like something a human 1,500 would not prevail against. All right, so I'm down a knight. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, this bot has crushed my spirit. Um, so we'll see what we can do about that. Uh. Huh? continues protecting this check. Hmm. I guess we'll take this. The check is still protected against. Um. Oh, I lose my rook. All right. Nicely played. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I might be in trouble here. It's possible I might not be able to beat the spot. <laughs> so I'm starting to realize that 1500 something CCRL, it's pretty strong. Um, I feel a bit like, uh, what was it? It was Kasparov, was it the rematch or the first match where there was just a bit of a lopsided thing going on at one point? Um, and then the uh, recognition of the need to take the bot seriously. All right, so I'll take this. And now this pawn drops? Oh, no, it doesn't. It does not. Hmm. Why, why do I have no initiative here? That's a bit irksome. There's nothing... There's no threat I can make in this position to gain the initiative. 
I can't, by tactical means, seize the initiative here. Um, I'd expected there to be some tactic that works out well, but this is not a human opponent. Um... Hmm. Yeah, making threats that have have some strong, broader plan behind it is not easy. Okay, the queen's in an awkward square. This knight is blocking knight d4. So I'll actually use this other knight here. Okay, queen exchange occurs. If I take there, that strengthens the center, but removes the bishop pair. Okay. Hmm. Can I win this pawn with pawn g? No, that doesn't work. It's not tactically supported. I so rely on tactics and cheap shots in blitz games. And so we found one opponent who that just doesn't work against, and I need something different. Um... I need to play good chess. Can I play f5 here to split that? It does expose my king a bit. Hmm. Right, so that's the peril of playing this. But I don't think it's so bad. Okay, my knight's also kicked around again. Now I'm threatening knight d5. Um, if I push... You no, know, g5 immediately still exposes my position. Oh, b4 is a nice pawn break. b4, knight d5... Normally, I'd assume these tactics work in my favor. I'm too curious. So, yeah, this position's nice. Didn't see that one, did you? Oh, maybe it did. Uh, interesting. How does this work out for the bot, though? Because I can move my rook. Does it have another attack on the piece I'm just missing here? So the knight runs away. I get this exchange. And that's the hard part, is getting an advantage. Now we have to coast with the advantage and cruise to victory. Um, rook a8, we exchange, I'm threatening rook a2. If I do rook c8 instead of rook a8, d5 is possible. Um, yeah, regardless of what I do, this spot opponent should try to escape the knight on c7. So if I were to play king f7, king e6, king d5, king, king takes pawns not legal here. I'm trying to stop these pawns from advancing further because they could produce some pretty nasty tactics. All right. Uh, the bot voluntarily exchanges the only piece that's giving me any headache here. Uh, 
Presumably it's going to find some other way to cause problems. Uh, so it's going to try to wrap uh, to snack to whatever to take my pawn. Um, and I was just more concerned about... Oh! Okay, king d5 doesn't actually work anymore because this king on e3 is too well positioned. Um, I could still back up here though. Pawn d5 is not happening here. Right, so this is... I forced the bot to play passively against me, and now I've taken the d5 square. Um... How do I take the initiative here now? Oh, it's... King c4 isn't really a threat. Do I just play g5, h5, f4? Is that the idea? If I play g5, rook f2, then what? How do I make progress here? Yeah, I could retreat my rook that's kind of fenced in, but my rook's making this beautiful position possible. Um, yeah, let's try this. Oh! Okay. Uh, that was a nice cheapo. But... Unless I'm missing something, I have all the cards in this position. Um, I'm annoyed that that's so effective. So... How... Yeah, this is even. That is super annoying. Um... Okay, I break through over here. I could just take the pawn, but I don't even need to. All right, I managed to out-calculate a bot. Do I get some sort of, like, computer award trophy for that? Um, yeah, it's going to take... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Uh, I forgot. Um, my pawn's on a black square. <laughs> Thankfully, I have this beautiful threat. Um, I So the reason I didn't march my king over here immediately... Is, uh, what? Can I make any progress here? Like, I know in theory, in most positions like this, this is a draw. Um, I thought I could get my king to h3 in a hurry. Uh, I messed up. So, no, let's we'll just take the draw. Um. Hmm. Unless I could find some cheapo here. But am I really going to out-calculate this opponent? I think not. Where's the draw button? <laughs> uh, can I trick it? Can I trick the damn thing? Probably not. 
Uh, okay. So we'll try this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bot's not going to make some big blunder here. Funny as that could be. Uh, well, I say that. Huh. This is actually way more interesting than I expected. Um... Do I have any tricks up my sleeve here? This is table base level difficult. Um, so if there's a trick, it's keeping the rook along this rank. That way bishop c5 check is not possible. That way king h2 is not possible and therefore the bishop must move somewhere. And if I could control all the squares that the bishop can move to, then other things are possible. Um, so, <laughs> that absolutely insane idea in mind. I don't... There's not a win here. I wish there were. It'd be so funny if there were. But, no. We'd have to fence the king into the other corner and then zigzag it somehow. It's just not a thing that that's possible in this position. So again, protecting against bishop c5 check. Yeah. There's no trick in this. Is there a move limit in uh, the interface itself? Does the interface rec- or is this just playing on Lee Chess at the moment? Because that'd be hilarious for everyone to see me failing against the spot on Lee Chess. Hmm. Alright, whatever, we'll take a draw. Okay. Now we're going to play the London, because we have no soul anymore. Um, I could take on C2, can't I? Uh, we're going to throw this in. This bot is just asking for trouble. Uh, I could attack the knight immediately, but that doesn't improve my position. So we're just going to leave the knight floating here until I have some reason to attack it. Okay. This is ridiculous. Um... So, I have a space advantage. I had a space advantage. Um, maybe there's some king safety advantage here somewhere. Hmm. If I take this, wait, no, I should take this, and then still tactics are not favorable. Um, I could push e3 now. 
An e3 knight takes... Even if this doesn't win on the spot, like, it seems interesting. There must be some advantage conferred by this somehow. Could I open the file now that I want it open? I don't know. Let's try. So if I push this, it's just going to push h6. Um, c4 is a threat. Let's just bring the rook out this way. Okay. c4 remains a threat. How is this not winning? How is this not winning? There's so many legal moves here. C4 is still threatened. Okay. So it protects against knight e3. Um... If I do knight e3, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, there's no follow-up. Wait, no. Um, man, it's just in time to stop my threat, too. And I don't have a way to renew it, as best as I can tell. I could play rook g e6 to renew the threat. Um... There we go. There we go. We've broken in. And now I play rook g8. Which still doesn't mate somehow. <laughs> um, if I play queen e4, since bishop f3 is not possible, they've got to protect the rook. But this rook defense is futile because this check... Um, and then I get to pick up the rook. Okay. That was exciting. So next I'd like to win a knight. Um, shall we? How do I win the knight? Oh, I can just take it now? Was there not a square to defend this from? I mean, there's queen f1, which I guess somehow must have failed. I guess the knight takes pawn or something like that. The way I saw this, the king was chained down to the knight. And the queen was also chained down to defending the knight until the king moves. Because they had stepped into this pin. Um... Oh, my knight's pinned, so I can't do that trick, but this is more than adequate. Um, and then I threaten mate. Any last words? Thanks for the game. We beat it! All right, so that's Monstrosity 200 with a CCRL Blitz estimated ALO of 1569. That's, I guess, based on whatever machine that was running on, right? Um, <laughs> Game Tech Explained. 
Estimated ALO of 1713 CCRL. This bot has some idea of which squares its pieces will generally be good on and is capable of looking ahead to figure out how to get them there. More importantly, however, the code has been written to resemble a pawn. Yeah, in the video uh, Sebastian shared, you could see um, the source code was in the shape of a pawn, which is hilarious. Uh, some claim that this gives the bot superhuman chess powers, rendering it impossible for mere mortals to defeat. You know, it's probably right. We really, really struggled playing against Monstrosity 200. And this is over 100 ALO points estimated stronger. Shall we die to it? Um, let's see. Let me also see one thing on my overlay. Like, you can see all the menu settings on the bottom. What happens if I pick full screen? Okay. Uh, is it still visible? Yeah, okay. So it just looks slightly nicer on my display. Let's try um, this. This is going to be extremely intense. Um, okay. I'm going to play pawn e5 when it makes sense for me to do so. It makes it okay. Oh no, I am doomed. I am so doomed. Um, there are not words to describe my doomedness. Well, there's one glimmer of hope, and that while the bot may be able to execute its plans. It's not stopping all of my plans. I can still plan if I can come up with a plan. Um, why don't... Oh, right. That's not hanging. If I push C5 and A4, that looks okay. Spooky... Oh, no. Queen F5. This is clearer. I could go back to d8. I could push e5. I could do rook a7. Rook a7 looks right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm playing against um, tiny chess bots. And this one has probably the same rating that I have. So this is a very intense challenge. Um, wait, can I push c5 here? Okay, the queen defends the knight. I missed that. But this looks fine. Hmm. The knight could just move up if I do something stupid. So I should just take this pawn. Or I should push pawn d4. Um, pawn d4 walks into a fork. I'm taking the... If I take the pawn, bishop e3... I could push pawn d4 in that case. Right. So, this is anticipating that maybe I, against bishop e3 I would play pawn d4. Therefore, it's trying to separate my queen from the support of this square. Um, but I think bishop f6 is pretty... Wait, bishop f6 takes, takes, takes d5, and I cannot recapture because my rook is on pre. So... Blocking with my bishop drops this pawn. Advancing my queen looks okay. I still drop the pawn, but it's no big deal. Well, 
Yeah, night takes is still possible, so I'm still dropping the pawn here. Um, hmm. I could have the rooks protect each other. But... Okay, the pressure against this position is too great. I have to exchange. Um... That's a pin. Amazing. Oh, that's also a fork. Oh my gosh. How insidious. Huh. Attempts to get out of this fork are messy at best. Am I... Jeez. Yeah, chess is visually quite difficult. That would be accurate. Look here. This pinned my knight. Yeah, me too. I wish everyone would have gone and voted on the poll. Like, if I could get the entire internet voting on the poll, that would have been fun. It's a collective action problem. Um... Yeah, I appreciate it. I guess the thing I was trying to suggest is people, like, promoting the link. Because getting people to vote seems um, harder than getting people to share the thing with other folks. But what do I know about social networking dynamics? Um, so if I push this pawn... Yes, yeah, so I live here, if only briefly. Uh, okay, I can take this. What a mess. So, yeah, like I said, if only briefly I live here, but I am dead. There's no surviving this. <laughs> All right, this time I get the white pieces. Uh, you know, there need to be... I need to, like, do this on a grander scale. Not just me against a bot, but just, like, get a classroom of players and have them all face off sharing uh, their insights and commentary with each other. Trying to defeat the damn thing. While we still can. Uh, okay. Oh no. Wait, is this... I have to castle queenside here. Uh, just kidding. Apparently. Um... These tactics are something else. Uh, okay. I develop my pieces. Develop my king. Why do I not have useful tactics here? Wait, pawn c5, queen takes knight e6. All these checks are ruled out by my bishops, and therefore knight e6 would be a fork that's favorable. Therefore c5 is playable. Uh, I could take this. And I've given away two pieces for one. Okay. I can't beat the damn bot. Ah. Alright, does it know this opening? <laughs> Maybe I have some chance of an opening victory. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? There we go. We'll call this a victory. This is about the best I can hope to extract from the spot, I think. Um, uh, 
Uh, yeah, we could take a look. All right. I want to beat the spot. I'm so embarrassed for having lost. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. I activate my bishop. My castle. We're not going to give an inch here. Um, keep activating my pieces. This is so difficult. So, how do I make more progress? I want to put a piece on e4 before pawn e4 happens. Or maybe it's fine to allow pawn e4. It's going to play pawn e3 instead. And then I just don't have a target. Uh, I'm so confused. Wait, do I put the queen on the center file? But does that do anything? Um... I'm up a piece, if I can figure out how to use it. Uh, I'll take this. Ah, I was up a piece. That's annoying. I was up a piece. Let's see. 21 participants. Oh, yeah, we could take another look then. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Cognitive decline. Comes from watching this channel, doesn't it? Um, Alright, so... I'll see if I can put any pressure on my bot opponent. Um, that's annoying. That's a really good tactic there. Uh, I, queen f2, queen takes, check. No, that's no good. I've just conceded a pawn for no reason, apparently. Oh. I thought we were going to see an exchange of rooks, and then rook b8, and I would get counterplay. Instead, we see another tactical shot. Um, which is fine? Question mark? Third tactical shot. Uh, 
and a checkmate. Gosh darn it. All right. We're going to beat the damn thing. Well, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm trying to move the pieces before the bot moves. Yeah, I didn't see it either. All right, so defend this, activate a piece, castle. Have I dropped something here? Just my soul. All right. It's fine. I've got the bishop pair, which is sure to be a long lasting advantage. That with great precision, I will squeak out a win against this. Nicely done. All right. Uh, I'll try again. Hmm. <laughs> There we go. Another advantageous start position. Wait, uh, I've got to think about this for one second before I do something retarded. Uh, if I castle, it takes my pawn. It's not worth it. Um, all right, so I've provoked pawn e5. This means that g2 is under pressure. Um, that's weird. Okay, this is not an easy position. Um... Mm -hmm. Wait, there was bishop a6 check here the whole time. Thankfully it didn't work, but... Um, yeah, this is just extremely precarious. Queen trap? Is my queen trapped if I take this? I didn't think so. Yeah, the code submission aspect is over. What is not ended is your ability to play against these bots and lose to them in real time. Um, that will be forever. <laughs> we'll always be able to lose to these bots. <sighs> so... Oh, crap. That's kind of a big threat. To defend this. Wait, can I not take this pawn? Oh, I can, but it's hideous, but possible. Wait, what? Okay, I can't take that because queen e4 check. So I have to retreat here. I bought... Oh! I see what happened here. <laughs> you see that? That's pain. That's the sound of realization right there. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Um, this is a mess and a half is what this is. How many attempts is it gonna take me to defeat the spot? It's going to be a lot, whatever the number is. Okay. Wait, why do I not just take this? Because it's no good. There's no reason to take it. Uh huh. So we back up. Okay. 
Is there some bishop trap thing going on that I'm just not aware of? Oh, it's going to kick this and then do a fork. That's cheeky. All right, fine. We'll exchange bishops. Get this end game that this bot opponent wanted. Um, this is silly. How many of you studied bishop and rook end games? Or bishop rook bishop end games, rook end games, and then bishop and rook end games. Nobody studies this stuff. Uh, I'm going to develop this outside the chain. And this is probably pretty theoretical in terms of, um, I don't know, trying to evaluate what's going on. Um, like, yeah, the <laughs> yeah, checkmates are one thing. You don't need to know the checkmates. You just need to know, like, am I winning or not? You don't need to actually find the mate. And so the question comes here, how do you evaluate this sort of thing? Like, and then how do you outsmart a bot that's also trying to evaluate it? Um, no, the key in these sorts of endgames is to fo focus on peace activity. Getting pieces on good squares. Uh, one way to do that is to open lines for your pieces. So I'm going to push h4. <laughs> hey, look, it's my lucky day. No, the bot, my opponent, surely did this for seeing some huge initiative thing on my part. And just absolutely hated its rook there. Um... So, now do you take this pawn, or do you keep pushing? Like, opening the edge file seems pretty good. But maybe there's better if I just keep pushing my pawn. I don't know. But yeah, peace, activity, and mobility are just absolutely enormous in this sort of thing situation so yeah i'm gonna act oh what the hell okay uh yeah i'm just gonna like not worry about my pawn and try to activate my pieces uh <laughs> who would have guessed that our opponent has a bug well, now we know. Um, might as well take advantage of it. Thanks for the game. Oh my goodness. So, we have defeated Game Tech Explained. Halo 1317 uh, 17, estimated. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> Electric Shockwave Gambit. In this tiny chess bot tournament, the sneaky bot tried to exploit a loophole in the rules to stun its opponents. Which didn't work out, but it's a clever idea. Beyond that, it values both the mobility and safety of its pieces, and the opposite for its opponent. And is, quite, and is able to look quite far ahead to achieve this. Yeah, I don't think I can defeat... Like, I said that about this one. I said that about this one. Um, Electric Shockwave Gambit. Hmm. Might be my new analysis tool of choice. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, the bishop exchange is slightly weird. Do I push e5? Do I get an advantage from attacking this pawn at knight? Or do I let the opponent push e5 because I'm not concerned about it? If the opponent pushes, I win a pawn. If I push, do I gain anything? No. 
Hmm. If I do bishop g5, maybe I gain something. No, I don't. It's silly. Let's bring the rook out. Now pushing might make some sense. Let's try it. Uh, take here. And produce a threat. And then put the knight to safety. And I feel like I should have some follow-up. Like, obviously pushing this pawn to d5 is an idea. Um, I don't understand how it is that I'm just pushing my opponent around. Estimated ALO ratings, I guess, only mean so much. Um, I'll take this. Do I take the pawn first, or do I do this fork first? I think taking the pawn is even spookier. Because um, rook takes, and I do the fork, and then I pick off either rook. So if I take the pawn, it might not take my rook. Um, yeah, let's try that. And then I could play the other knight forward to surround the king. This is just... Our bot opponent must see everything that I'm plotting way before I see it. And just must be giving up and accepting that my plans and plots are going to work. Um, it's just... Yeah, this bot must have some futility problems. Um, where it's just not evaluating things for fear that there's just no hope. Um, right, so we're going to take this. Hmm. Do I not have a mate here? I do not have a mate here, so we're just going to back up. Yeah, I think the bot opponent um, just gave up on the position. Um... And having given up, it didn't put up a proper defense. All right. Next opponent. Uh, King Gambot the Fourth. This bot uses many techniques to search deep in the position. It has a good understanding of where its pieces should be placed, but is hindered drastically by the king's usually misplaced faith in his ability to lead the attack. This entry was intended as a joke, but is nonetheless a force to be reckoned with. All right. I kind of want to deploy this bot um, for my simpler eval or one of my leech spots. It'd be fun to have. Uh, this is something that you could just play against online. Um, so I'm going to try to win this pawn. Okay. Let's see. Can 
Can I use the bot's preference against it somehow? Like, it wants to use the king to lead the attack. What if I try to force it to use something else? That is check. Oh, crap. I walked right into that. Um, is losing exchange so bad here? Yeah, but I can't do anything about it. So, all right, my king gets to safety, but um, yeah, I'm down material. Okay, I did force it to move its king to the edge, though. So, hooray for that. Um, can I... Oh. I can't make any good threats in this situation. I'm toast. Yeah, there's, like... Anything I want to do is instantly rebuffed. Um, hmm. Well, I have to exchange a rook because it's there's too much pressure. Um, I did force the king out of the attack, though. So that's pretty funny. Um, we'll try to take this. It won't work, but we'll try. Oh, I can't take it. Because, yeah, it's pinned. Um, okay. Can I do anything tricky here? I don't think so. Um, if I could trap the opposing king, that would be one hell of an achievement. Um, yeah, there is. There's no out calculating this monster. All right, nicely played. I'll try again. Um, see, my problem is that I enjoy endgames, and this bot is going to defeat me in every endgame ever. So... The whole thing about wanting to play an endgame works very get much against me here. Wait, what? I take the file. I offer a draw. <laughs> Give me a draw now. <laughs> uh, I'm not getting a draw. Oh, man. I want a draw. Mm -hmm. Alright. Gosh darn it. All right, I'll try this again. And this time, maybe play a good opening. Something suited to this caliber of opponent. Just avoid peace exchanges like the plague. Keep avoiding peace exchanges. Nope, not trading with you. Uh, okay. 
So I've trapped a knight. I don't know that I can take it, but it is trapped. Oh, let's chase the king. Okay, I want a piece. Finally. And with that, I should be able to sweep this. Well, that and the fact that the bot just plays in this idiosyncratic fashion where its king is just severely exposed. Um, so, it's playing left-handed, I guess, for lack of a metaphor. Um, backhanded or something. Like, it's not fighting at its full potential. So, yeah, I should be able to crush it. Okay, we'll even go into an endgame. Uh-huh. Should be able to win even in an endgame. Here, you can get two rooks for a queen, that's fine. I'm up a piece. I don't trifle about such exchanges. Um, what the hell? Are my threats so severe here? That doesn't make sense what it just did. It was really concerned about queen takes b2. Uh, that's weird. All right, how do I pick up material here? I guess I step out of the damn pin. Um, it is nice having this on a dark square, because this bishop can't ever hit this. So I there's so much I don't even need to bother analyzing. Just because a piece on a dark square can't be hit uh by this piece on a light square or this piece on, or it can't be hit on uh, this piece on a light square rather. Um It's just geometry. Oh my god. Why did I do that? I was so excited to win this. Um, well, what's the best way to win this now? Check. Promote. There we go. Okay, how do I... I can't defend the pawn. And yet, if it's not check when that's taken, maybe I don't care as much. Um, I like to take this pawn. Okay. Wait, I could just take this now. Okay. How do I avoid losing my floating piece? Um like this. Okay, and then we move the floating piece so it's not floating anymore. And then this drops. Okay. And this should get simpler from here on out. Um, protect the center of the board. 
Um, line up an amazing tactic. All right. Surround the damn king. Keep surrounding. And let's just take the pawn. Because that's the piece that's going to give us any headache here. Uh-huh. Uh, I can promote this without any problem. And checkmate. Okay! We did it! That's King Gambot the Fourth that just walked into a mate, more or less, with an estimated CCRL of 2172. Um, I don't know about this. Like, we might have to save the rest of these bots for a future date. So, you know, you can find this uh, Sebastian Logs program here. The Tiny Chess Bot Challenge is available on itch.io. As you can also find this video on YouTube. So, this was fun. Um, I'm impressed just... Yeah, how much effort all the authors of... I forget how many submissions there were. I think somewhere around 500. That's crazy. Um, they all wrote bots that could be compiled from less than 1,024 tokens. So it's like variables, functions, that sort of thing. Um, it's incredible what complexity could come out of such minimalism. Um... So yeah, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed.